Welcome into the Thunder Basketball Universe presented by Coop Aleworks. If you're watching us on YouTube, which you should be, you might notice that we're not in the studio. That's because we've got a very special guest with us today, and that is the one and only Trey Mann joining us on the podcast again. He's a friend of the pod at this That's point right. now. Trey, thanks so much for being here. Really appreciate you taking the time after a practice day to sit down and talk with us. Of course. You've had so much going on lately, but we wanted to, to get you started by pinpointing a couple things that happened off the floor on Monday in the Boston game. We'll do them one by one. Poku, like, rolled out the red carpet for you when you walked in the building. What's going through your head when you try to, you're about to open your car door? And if you if you didn't see this on our, at OKC Thunder social channels, it was, it was fun. Oh, no, I just, Poku is just a clown. Like, he just does, <laughs> like, funny stuff like that all the time. But I didn't really see him until like he opened the door because I was like looking down trying to get my keys and stuff. And um, when he opened it, I was just like, you know, typical Poku. He do stuff like that all the time. <laughs> but it was funny though. Then you had yourself a night at in the game, obviously, a, a OKC rookie record scoring night, 35 points. And I feel like there was a very, <laughs> just like a, a humbling moment maybe, but also I was like, how, how could this happen? Shay took your popcorn after the game. <laughs> Shay. I was like, let the man have his popcorn. First of all, where did the popcorn come from? Because like, I, it smelled so good and I was getting jealous. Uh, I don't know if I could tell y'all. Oh, wow. He's got Ooh. a secret stash. No, nah, okay. no. Nah, yeah. um, <laughs> Frank, Frank bring us popcorn like before the games. Okay. okay. And I don't want to eat my popcorn before the games because yeah. like, I don't know. But it's either Shay or Wiggs who take my popcorn after the game. So. Oh, it's consistent. Yeah. Oh, it man. always happens. How come... How come Aaron can take your like you don't let Aaron take your popcorn? Mm-mm. I know I understand oh, with Shay saying. when Shay comes in and he's like, "All right, Rook, but yeah. I need the popcorn." Yeah. But like, Wiggs took it. Wiggs like, took it one time. It. Yeah, he yeah. took it one time, and wow. I didn't know he took it until like after. So <laughs> wow, my goodness, <laughs> it is what it is. I just remember seeing that interaction because it was in our post game press conference, and I think you had gone first, and mm-hmm. Shay was right after you, and Shay suddenly had the popcorn, and I was yeah. like, "That's so messed up." The man just went for 35. You're just going to jack his popcorn like that? Come on. Yeah. That's Shay, though. I mean, he asked for it, but um, like they they try to take it when I'm not in a locker room. Like they usually do that. Uh, Okay. But that time he asked me, I was like, yeah, go ahead and have it. Yeah. Okay. He's willing to share. That's fair. Okay. Well, the next thing we want to get into, we have a game that we call the starting five, and it's five rapid fire questions just to help us get to know you a little bit better. So, me and Nick will alternate these questions. Yeah. Sound good? Yep. All right. Okay. First one. You have an incredible name for the job that you do, Trey Mann. What is the best nickname that you have ever had? Tricky, tricky Trey. Tricky Trey. Trey. Nice. Okay. Okay. There's just so many great yes. puns that obviously I, I assume you've heard and seen at this point. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen a lot, but my favorite is I just like Tricky Trey. That's like that, a that really defines your game, it's too. It's very yeah. on brand. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The play that you had last night against Orlando, where you like did seven different dribble <laughs> moves, you got in the middle of the lane, did the Euro step floater. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I tough. can tell even you, <laughs> as you were running back down, you're kind of like... Yeah, that was yeah. tough. I wanted to see... I haven't seen, like, no highlights or nothing of it, but I remember it was tough. I did, like, a half spin, and I lost the ball, mm-hmm. and I got it. I did, like, the, the fake euro. Yeah, that was tough. Yeah. Yeah, that's like a it's like a running back juke move mm-hmm. that you mm-hmm. see. Yeah. Like, where did, you, where did you pick stuff like that up? I don't know. Probably, like, just working on different finishes, like, doing stuff that's not normal, because, like, I feel like I throw off defenses. And, um, you know, my trainers try to do that, like doing off foot finishes and mm-hmm. stuff like that. So I don't know, just trying to do stuff that the defense wouldn't think is coming. So I assume also, like, you weren't always 6'3. So, like, being 6'5, six, 6'3, six, five. Six, 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 like, I'm, 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 like you, you didn't always have, like, the height that you have now. I'm sure mm-hmm. having to operate on some of those moves, mm-hmm. yeah. like, was important, right? Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, the height definitely helped out a lot, but. I don't know, it just made me like more confident, especially yeah. for college. Because you know, I was smaller like weight wise and height wise. So the height helped out in college for sure. That makes sense. That makes sense. I just love every time we hear what a man playing I mean, over that's the yeah. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good one. All right, Gala. Okay. What is your go to Sonic order? Sonic. Probably two corn dogs and um there's some tater tots. Okay. What okay. about a drink? Do you get a? Do you get any kind the, of slushy? The ocean. The yeah, ocean, ocean water. water. Ocean yes. water. Ocean water is yes. so good. Ocean water. Great so. choice. Great choice. Your go-to pregame song. 
Um, pre-game song. Right now, it's I got a couple because Lil Dirk just dropped the album. Mm-hmm. And I listened to that. So, um, probably have to say what happened to Virgil. And um, Head Taps. Okay. And I imagine that that's changed a lot throughout yeah. your, mm-hmm. your I career. usually go like... Like songs that are newer mm-hmm. and I'm like listening to a lot. Like I listen to those like before the game because like the recent on your um, yeah, like the recently downloaded. So mm-hmm. it's like right there. I just click on it and just listen to that. Big yeah. music guy. Um, you really into music a lot. Yeah, but I'm not as bad as some people. Like Wigs, Wigs said he listen to music all day. Like he get home, turn on the speaker. Like I don't do that. I just listen to it. <laughs> <in the car. laughs> so there was a time I felt like I had to have like something on in the background at all mm-hmm. times. Yeah. yeah, I'm not. I'm not yeah. that bad. <laughs> All right, what's your favorite thing to do on an off day in OKC? Uh, nap. Yeah. <laughs> get, get the rest as best as you can. Yeah. This is the most nap. games you've probably ever played. In, oh, yeah, you've definitely ever played in a season. Yep. Yeah. 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 So I like to catch up on my, my sleep. Um, I try to find stuff on Netflix, but I end up going to sleep anyway. So probably nap. It's good for you because like during the course of a, an NBA season, we get in at 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't know, like, there's optional shooting yeah. out of the gym. You got to hop on the bus by, like, 9.30 the next morning, something yeah. like that. So you might be getting six hours of sleep. Yeah. So naps are crucial. Yeah, I've learned that, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even just covering games, naps are naps are important. All right, last one. You're on a deserted island by yourself trying to escape. What teammate would you want with you to help you try to escape that deserted island? <laughs> Definitely not wigs. <laughs> we'll wow. probably just joke around, nah, because we we can't take anything serious. So um, anything, some serious, smart. Uh huh. Probably have to go with. Oh, K Rich for sure. K Rich. Oh yeah. K Rich. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's got he's got like some some toughness and like yeah. muscle to him too. So. Toughness, smart. You know, older. So some wisdom. Yep. Either uh, K Rich or Musky. Yeah, that's that's that a good that's a good combination. Yeah. That's a good combination. It's fun to hear you talk about wigs though, because you guys just seem like you have such a fun relationship, and it started like right away. Mm-hmm. Yeah, did not. You, did it start with the the Florida Maryland bet? Is that what happened? <laughs> um, I would. Uh... Or before then, because you know you had summer league. Yeah, and, I think it was. Yeah. I think it was before then. It wasn't. We we didn't get close like close close until. Okay, so when Gabby when Gabby was here, Gabby mm-hmm. left, and that that playing spot was open, like okay. on the plane. Oh. Wigs came and sat there, and then like from there we just started like talking more, hanging out more, and now it's just like like we got our inside jokes, yeah. like we think the same stuff. So yeah, it started whenever like that playing spot got opened up. I, I can't remember if that was before or after. Sure. Yeah. Did he start stealing your popcorn before or after he started sitting next to you on the plane? After. <laughs> so it's like, it's like wow. back, backstabbing. Yeah, that's so back messed up. <laughs> he just got close to you for the popcorn, man. Yeah. That's so messed up. It's crazy. <laughs> Hopefully we see this. <laughs> You're right. on notice. <laughs> We're going to take a short break right here, and we'll be right back right after this. Coop L Works is the proud sponsor of Thunder Basketball Universe. Brewers of the fan favorites, F5 IPA and 99 Calorie Ice Chest IPA. You'll find those and many more Coop beers at retailers across Oklahoma. Learn more at CoopLWorks.com. Okay, I feel like we get we got to know you and and Wiggs a little bit better yeah. <laughs> in the starting five. Now we just want to just focus on you a little bit. We obviously have seen what you can do on the floor. You have had a couple of really big breakout offensive games. Mm-hmm. And so we just want to know, let, let's take it all the way back to young Trey growing up in Florida. Just when did basketball become your thing? When did you know that that was your thing? How did it become your thing? Um, Seven. I was seven years old when I played my first like organized basketball mm-hmm. t- for for an organized basketball team. It was at the MLK, and um, you know I've been around it my whole life because my dad played. He didn't play like professional or anything like that, but he was always playing like basketball outside. Went to the courts with him, things like that. So I was always around it, and um, I just fell in love with it since then. But um, around like maybe tenth grade. 11th, I was like, I can be really good and uh-huh. I could probably, you know, go to the NBA and stuff like that. So when you said the at the MLK, what is that? And and do you still remember like what the courts look like there and, yeah. and what that whole setup is? It's the Martin Luther King Center. It's like it got a pool, um, 
court, weight room, stuff like that for like the kids to come through and stuff. And um, I remember it. I remember how it smelled, all of that, because I was in there almost every day, you know, just just playing, working out. We see how hard you work. I'm curious, like when you started to love basketball, was mm-hmm. that just like, okay, I want to be in the gym every single day? Was that immediate? It was just, yeah, it was it was immediate. Like I just loved playing basketball. It wasn't even about like going to work hard. It was just going to play basketball. Mm-hmm. Like that was the only thing I really wanted to do. And then like, as I got older, then it was like working hard. Like I'm gonna get better at this. I'm gonna focus on this today. But when I was young, it was just having fun playing basketball. That's what I wanted to do. In that that 10th grade stretch, when you realized that you could, you know, be really good, mm-hmm. what what was kind of your like identity as a basketball player? Like what was your, were you were you the shooter? Obviously I imagine you were you were point guard kind of yeah. role. What, what was kind of your identity at that point? Uh, Say kind of like the same I am now, but shorter. Um, not as athletic, a little skinnier. Um, and I wasn't, I had some moves, but it wasn't like as noticeable. People yeah. notice me more for my shooting and my scoring, mm-hmm. but they weren't always talking about my moves and stuff. So. Okay. Okay. Well, when you were a little kid, would you like, would you come home and be like mad if you lost or were you, were you was it oh, yeah. like the joy of the game or were you like this like no, I used competitor to, that I used to cry after losses sometimes like. <laughs> Like if it was a close game and we lost like on like a buzzer beater or about a couple points, I used to cry. But if it was games where, you know, I didn't think we were going to win anyways, like it was like I'd be mad or whatever. But I took basketball like very serious, very personal, like at a young age. So I I wondered that because, you know, we see when we watch you play, there's so much joy that just like comes out Mm -hmm. of you when you play. Mm -hmm. But there's these little moments that after having watched you now for like almost 70 games or whatever it is, like Mm -hmm. you see the little like switch of like hyper competitiveness, like a little bit of angst, like that little touch of anger that you need to be great. Like Mm -hmm. it's cool. It's cool to see those things pop out. Yeah. That's, I don't know. I I feel like I'm always be that way. Like just being a competitor, but um, I try to have as much fun as I can. Um, That was something like something that I had to work on in college because I was kind of like, being too serious with it. And my mm-hmm. people was like, you still gotta go out there and have fun and, you know, just be thankful that you're out there and be grateful that you're playing basketball. So that's what I try to do now, have as much fun, but also be, you know, a competitor still, so. Did you always only play, play basketball <coughs> or did you ever play any other sports? Um, I played baseball and football. Um, I was all right at baseball, not really football. I mean, I played street football, okay. yeah. like outside yeah. with my friends and stuff, I was pretty good, but once I got pads on and in front of everybody, I wasn't, I wasn't good yeah. at all. <laughs> so, what that. position did you play in baseball? Um, I played right field, played a little bit of pitcher, and first base. Okay. All right. Did you like it, or or was it just like another way to to get that competitive yeah. outlet out? No, nah, baseball was fun. I liked baseball. Um, my favorite thing to do was like steal bases where you like run in between. Tricky Trey. Tricky, yeah. tricky, tricky Trey. Trey. Like <laughs> it was fun where they'll throw the ball, I run this way, yep. throw it. Like, that, <laughs> that was my favorite part about bas- uh, that, baseball. That is, I'm so glad that you brought that up because that's like the way that you tell at, at the little kid age, like the little league age, like which kids are actually athletes and which ones aren't. And mm-hmm. the, there's the kids that can just like get on first base and make it to home without there even being like, more mm-hmm. than one pitch. Yeah. They just steal all the bases. <laughs> that's and, like, what I like to do. Yeah, that's what I like to do. <laughs> I can see that. I can see that. One other thing we wanted to talk to you about, and you mentioned it because obviously we just got back from the, the Florida road trip, got a chance to play in Miami and Orlando right down the street from the villages. You you mentioned what it was like for you growing up in the villages. Just what what is that? What's that like? What was that community like? And, you know, being a basketball player, being a really good basketball player, how'd they support you? Um, it was fun. Um, it was a lot of older people. So like, we didn't really have like a lot of malls or nothing like that. It was squares. So the square, there was like three squares and they had movie theaters. They had a lot of restaurants. And then they had like an area where people go, like the older people go and dance. They have dance classes. They have people coming and like musicians playing music. So it was cool. Like we'll try to switch it up. Sometimes we'll go to the movies, like me and my friends. Sometimes we'll go to the movies. Sometimes we'll go and like dance with the older people in the squares. Like it was, I got videos of it, like us just messing around with them. Um, but it was cool. They welcomed us. Like when we went in there, they would come dance with us, laugh. And um, some people knew who I was, some mm-hmm. people didn't. But when they did, it was all like support. Like congrats on this, congrats on that. Um, we love this, we love that. So that's how it was really my whole career. My whole time at the village is just a, a love and support place. 
did you have like your your circle of folks like you know that you knew would always support you or that like oh they're there I'll I'll, I'll go to that movie or go mm-hmm. dance over there or something yeah. like that um not really because it was just like random some night we'll go like we'll be just just hanging out me and my friends and be mm-hmm. like you want to go to the to the movies so it was never like we didn't go this day that day it was mm-hmm. just like random so okay. okay it wasn't people that we saw every time okay but yeah. just like the institutional support because it yeah. sounded like you know, as you told us, there's a, a bunch of people that came from the villages to the game in Orlando. You have mm-hmm. like a hundred grandparents. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably more than that. Yeah. What was that what was that trip like as a whole though? I mean, I imagine because your family came to Miami too. Mm-hmm. Okay. What was that just Florida trip like? Uh, it was it was cool. Like the NBA is way like chiller than college. Cause mm-hmm. you know, in college if I I was home, but like after games it was see my family, then go. And then away games, it was hotel. Like we weren't allowed Don't to leave. leave the hotel. Yeah. Weren't allowed yeah. to leave the hotel. Like I was just talking to my guy Mike Williams um, when I was in Miami because he came up there, and we went out to eat. We was about to go shopping. I was like, it feel good to like be able to walk out the hotel, not mm-hmm. worry about like who I got to tell them, like where I'm going, yeah. like what time I'm leaving, if I'm allowed to leave. Yeah. So um, it was just cool hanging out with him for a little bit, getting dinner, talking to him, just getting away from you know, the, the basketball side of it. That mentality hits home with me so hard just because I played college basketball too. Mm-hmm. And so you know. joining the NBA, I was yeah. like, okay, I'm leaving the hotel. Mm-hmm. Who do I have to tell? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, exactly. Is this allowed? What time do I have to be back? Yep. None of that is the yeah. case in the NBA. Yeah, it's, it's a whole cool. different whole different it. story. You, you were in college during a crazy time too, beyond just the normal like college restrictions because you're on a team, but like yeah. COVID too. Yep. Like you had to be checking in all the time on everything, I'm mm-hmm. sure. Like, 7 a.m. Uh, swaps, mm-hmm. um, especially the tournament. The tournament was it was crazy. Like everything was scheduled at a certain time. Waking up early, you know, late night uh, testing. Yeah. It was it was bad. Like <laughs> compared to now, it was, it was bad. Like then it was like it's whatever. But now once you see like you can go wherever, you know, do whatever. And then thinking back to college where you couldn't do nothing. Like I'm I'm happy I'm here. What was the the pre draft process like then too? Because you know, it seemed like a lot of interviews were over Zoom. Like not mm-hmm. everything could be mm-hmm. in person, and then like suddenly draft night, and you're you're coming to OKC. Yeah, I mean the pre draft was fun. I was in Miami. Um, my dad was there for me. I mean, with me for a little bit. Um, my girlfriend stayed with me, and every day was kind of the same. I worked out. I um, went back to the hotel, got something to eat, just hung out. Um, this stuff with my dad, this stuff with my my manager, um, and then the interviews. It was cool. Like I liked the Zoom because it was like I put on a, a dressy shirt. And I have on some regular short or work from home outfit. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Like, they, they didn't know. Like I just got out of bed like two minutes ago. So it was cool. That's amazing. That's awesome. And that was like your first time where you could just be about basketball mm-hmm. and nothing else. No school. No other obligations. Just basketball the thing that you love yeah that's awesome yeah if they were to teach like a like a business of basketball class in college what were what would be some of the things that like after having been a year in the nba like you would you would want to be like if you were the teacher of that class like here are the things that like you would need to know future nba player like some stuff that that just goes on in the nba cadence of of schedule um the traveling for sure Mm -hmm. um sleep talking about sleep getting your sleep um, taking care of your body. I mean, they talk about it a little bit, but I think it's more important than they make it seem. So taking care of your body, sleep, um, the traveling, and then um, just being early and like making sure you're there because nobody else gonna make sure. Like that's it's on you now. College, they text you like five minutes before, like be here, be here. Mm-hmm. But now it's just like it's all on you. You get your own yeah. time in the gym. You got to make sure you in there. Nobody gonna tell you to go work out. They're not gonna tell you to go lift. So um, that's what I have to say. Just the, the sleep, the traveling, taking care of your body, and then just making sure you, on time and where you need to be. Yeah, it's a it's it's a whole job now. Like it's a different mindset that you yeah. have to have at this point. One other thing we wanted to ask you about was obviously got the unique look with the gold patch, mm-hmm. and you've had it for a while now. When did that start for you? It started for me in fifth grade. Um, I got some crazy pictures. It was like <laughs> the first the first look I went with was I had my I had a short haircut, but I had it all blonde, and then like I had a double edge. So like it was a line here, a little bit of hair, and another line. So that was black. 
-huh. And then the rest of it was blind. And it started there, and then I, I kept that for a little bit. We and need it, if we need these pictures. I, I'm, 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 try, I'm, I'm so curious, <laughs> and I'm I didn't realize it them. went that far back. Yeah, like fifth, I thought it was a, a like college, like mm -mm. express myself. Nah, I wish, wow. but nah, I started started in fifth grade with that. Then eighth grade, I grew it out. It was like a little little bit longer. It wasn't as long as this, mm -hmm. but it was all blonde, no black. And then um, high school, I had a mohawk. Okay. Yeah, so okay. I had like this, but it went all the way back. Yep. And the top was blonde and like the bottom, like the bottom half was black. And then I did a something like this, a little flat top. Uh huh. And the top was blonde, a little bit of black. And then like once I got to college, I did the patch blonde and I put some blue in there. Okay. Oh, nice. Yeah. But Florida, the blue, Florida. Yeah, there you go. The blue faded out. So I just left it and then, um, I think I put blue in there again my second season. Yeah, I did put blue my second season, but it just fade out quick, and I just touch up the dye every once in a while. Okay. What's the process like on, on having to – like, you do it yourself? No, I, no? my stepmom does it. Okay. Um, she, she like, put the dye in there uh -huh. or whatever, and she get uh, some foil, like, wrap it in there. Yep. And leave it in there for some time, and then, like, she'll check it and then wash it out, stuff like that. So it's a, probably, like, an hour process. Okay. That's so, not too bad. Yeah. Throughout your time here, we could probably expect some different variations of the blonde. Or is I'm this not. is this kind of like you're settled on this? I now. think this is my look now. Okay. Oh wow. Okay. Nice. It, wow. Yeah. That's cool. That's yeah. awesome. Just like the 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 progression of the blonde throughout the years. This yeah. is where you I landed. Found it. I, found, <laughs> I found my look. Just found like look. just like how he's found his identity as a player, he's found his look too. Yep. There, there you go. go. <laughs> there you go. Well, speaking about your identity yeah. as a player, we would be remiss if we didn't talk about some of the incredible scoring games that you've had recently. Mm -hmm. Most recently, that that Boston game where you absolutely exploded. And I don't know what it is, Trey. Maybe you can explain it. But the the second <coughs> quarter of games, like <laughs> it's like three second quarters now and yes. two in the last week yeah, that you've gone nuts. I don't know. It just it just happened. Like I went out and shot in the first quarter. They didn't fall for me. But second quarter started falling so I was like all right I'm gonna keep shooting till I miss and then I missed one I was like well that felt good so I'm gonna shoot again until it don't feel good and they just kept going in my teammates kept finding me I stayed in the game so mm -hmm. yeah. that helped out a lot and then Boston it was like I shot the first one all I'm not gonna lie like on all of them I felt like they were travels like the first one I <laughs> caught it I was running and like Shay threw it and I like stepped back without dribbling uh -huh. and I was like that's a travel I'm, I was waiting for the whistle I shot it and it happened. I was like, all right. Not and then the NBA next one, Trey. yeah, yeah, you get away with a lot. And then, yeah. <laughs> Not me and all of them, all, all of the, the first three felt like travels, but mm -hmm. um, they just kept going in. And then coach was calling plays for me. I just wanted to keep shooting to see how I can, how much I can make before I missed. And I didn't end up missing until the second half. So <laughs> seriously, literally, it's, it's such an awesome way to put it. I know. I didn't miss till the second half. It so. just, it just yeah. happened to be the second quarter. Like I didn't plan it, but right. It just happened to be the second. Mark was saying, and I thought this is a, a really good point. You got going in both those games on first on a catch and shoot, mm -hmm. and, and you know the step backs. The those are like kind of theoretically harder shots. It, it, does the catch and shoot getting one of those and and getting a good clean one does that help you? Yeah, um, like just seeing the ball go in, mm -hmm. like that help out a lot. I'm sure a lot of people can tell you that just seeing the ball go in. So when you get your first look and it's a clean one, and it goes down, that's like it feels good, make you feel like really confident for the next one. You had told us that you know you knew that they were going to key in on Shea, and mm -hmm. so like you knew that your opportunities were going to be there. How was, has that been for you finding your looks just within the flow of the offense? Because we know that you can create for yourself, but yeah. that element of it, how has that been for you? I'm just trying to just add to my game because my whole life it was it's been creating. So mm -hmm. I was never really a catch and shoot guy, but um, I feel like the more you have to your game, like the harder to be to guard you. So um, Mark knows that my role won't always be on the ball creating. Mm -hmm. So he talked to me about that early. And um, I've just been trying to get better with that ever since then. And, you know, playing with Josh and Shay and Lou, they helped me out a lot because, you know, they create. Mm -hmm. And then, like, when they create, my my person is watching them or sleep on them or worried about them. And then that, that gives me the chance to work on my catch and shoot game. Right. So Yeah, you've been, I was just double checking, you've been 38% on catch and shoot. 43% from the corners this year. I mean, just projecting out in the future when you've got two other point guards mm -hmm. and Shea and Josh on the floor, a guy in Lou that can make plays, Poku who can operate out of the high. I mean, those shots are going to be there for right. you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I just 
got to knock them down. I didn't know I was shooting 43 from the corners, but like that was growing up. My people always told me the corner was the money shot. Like they mm -hmm. was like, if you can hit shots at 40% here, you can make a lot of money one day. I still remember that. I was probably like fifth grade or sixth grade when somebody told me that. I mean, you think about guys like Seth Curry and I mean, players that have had 10 year careers mm -hmm. and it's like, can you knock down that shot? Can yep. you knock down the catch and shoot? And you do it like, can that shot be from 27 feet yeah. or 29 feet or whatever, yeah. you know? And like mm -hmm. the more, the more that that shot is back on the, on the wings, like the more space there is. Yep. Yeah. That's what I try to do. I just try to create as much space as I can for Shay and those guys to go to work. And then if my, my guy is over too much and they throw it to me and I'm, I'm going to shoot it. Speaking about creating space, obviously you, you're able to do that for yourself. And I was thinking back to summer league and, you know, we were talking to coach and, you know, hearing that, you know, the size and the length was something that you needed to adjust to just mm -hmm. the, the size and length of NBA defenses, seeing where you are now, it's just kind of, it, it, it's really impressive and encouraging to see just how you're able to create that space. And obviously that's getting more comfortable and you're getting more confident in that. Yep. How did that come about? Like, where do you credit your comfort and just confidence in f getting more comfortable with NBA length and, and their size and defense? I have to say my coaches, cause um, they get on me about not taking those shots, passing up shots. So when they just like constantly saying it, constantly saying it, it's like, all right, I got to start doing it. Mm -hmm. And then um, I started doing it. Like Coach Mark said, I got my shot blocked a couple times. Then it was like, all right, so that one wasn't a good one. Like I can pump fake on that one. But like just just them talking about it as much and making it like really important for me. Like I made it as important. So I just try to get like as much reps as I can. Mm -hmm. And then like in practice and in games, I just try to take as many catch and shoots as I can. And, um, me and Eric uh, Maynard had our thing was pass up no catch and shoots. And um, that's how I was trying to do, like, in the, the beginning of the season. And it's just gotten easier for me since then. So. Yeah. It seems like the, the defensive side of the ball has has slowed down for you as well. I mean, we just mm -hmm. – we're seeing you make more and more of those plays. You stepped in and took a charge last yeah. night. Uh, and I actually remember, I think one of your very first defensive plays in summer league was a charge too. So it, 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 do you feel like that tone that you tried to set, you're following through on more as the year has gone on? Yeah. Uh, I – I was a big charge guy since high school. Like it's not really heard of because like the best player usually don't play no defense, but yeah. my high school coach, you know, stressed defense, stressed like making those type of plays. So college, I was taking charges. And then here, it's just like I try to find opportunity. It was just like finding the opportunity to take the charges, like when to mm -hmm. be in help, when to be the low guy. And then um, once I'm there, it's just like, might as well do it. Like, ain't. Ain't nothing too crazy gonna happen. Like, hopefully, I'm not gonna say yeah. yeah. Like, it's just once I'm there, it's just like, go ahead and take it. So. We, we, just for our friends, will you talk about being the low guy and, and what that means in the span, in the, in the course of a defense? So, the low guy is if the ball is on the opposite side of you and you're in a corner, guarding a corner guy, mm -hmm. you gotta be in the paint. Um, so, if they drive and get beat, like, you're there to help. And then you have another guy who's called the field guy, or, or the, um, we call him the first pass. So we sit at the in between the two guys on the backside, and wherever the ball go, he got that first pass. And the man who went, who was the low man, they got to get the next one. Mm -hmm. So the low guy is just the guy in the opposite corner, just being in the paint. Yeah, and then you got to kind of x out after that, yeah. right? So like, yeah, that is a crucial position. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you're there, you got to blow up a lob. Yeah. Sometimes you're there, you got to take a charge. Sometimes you got to haul back to the corner <laughs> like yeah. it's it's Spread crazy yeah. yeah and and so for a guy that's a rookie who just played like pandemic shorted shortened seasons in college mm -hmm. like how how much was that for you to try to like digest and learn because I remember you telling me like college defense is totally different yeah it is um it didn't take like as long it was just me like being in the game long enough because sometimes I was in the game and it was like one mistake seemed like like worse than it was because I was not in the game as long. Mm -hmm. So right. you weren't able to like right. make up for it kind of. And then, um, but I just got used to it. It wasn't that hard to learn. It was less help, but on the backside, you got to be in, in the paint, trying to make those plays. And that's what it is for me. I just try to make those, you know, like dirty plays, like the plays, mm -hmm. like the scrappy ones, nobody really willing to make. And that's what um, DA talked to me about all the time. Uh, just getting those plays into the game. And if you're playing hard, like we're not going to be mad at you if you mess up. So my thing is just trying to play hard and make like the scrappy plays. 
Yeah, effort yeah. and energy always makes up for any other mistakes that you mm-hmm. normally make out there on the floor. Yeah. The other thing I was thinking about with that low guy, he's probably normally the one that's going to be have the moment of truth opportunity. Yeah, and always. He's the one. You got to put yourself in that position. Yeah, moment of truth is you can either jump, go straight up, like jump vertical, verticality, whatever, however you say it, or you can take a charge, or you know, like just make a play on the ball. Right. And me, like I'm shorter, smaller, so. You know, me jumping probably won't do much. So mm-hmm. I just try to take a charge or try to swipe down and make a play yeah. on the ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Different moments of truth for different guys. Yeah. For yeah. sure. Yeah, just what what's your specialty? Like Mike Mascala is not like this, you know, incredible athlete, but he's got that yeah. verticality down mm-hmm. to a science when he's down there. Yep. Yeah, every single time. Every single time. Yeah. Well, Trey, before we let you go, it's it's kind of crazy to think that the season is almost <laughs> over. I, I, I imagine crazy. that's crazy for you it as is. well. Especially going with, you know, G League. You've had kind of two different seasons to kind of navigate this mm-hmm. year. Two more road trips. You're, we're about to head out tomorrow to go to Denver, then Portland. What's going through your head as this? you think about the fact that this is the second to last road trip of the season? Just trying to finish strong. Uh, you know, playing as many games as I can because I know, like, it's, it's tougher now. People are getting hurt. Mm-hmm. Um, people are sick. Like, we had a couple people miss games because mm-hmm. of sickness. So I'm just trying to finish strong and play in as many games as I can to finish out the season. Mark always talks about running through the finish line, and that's something that you all have done all season. I mean, another double-digit comeback win last mm-hmm. night. That's 13 on the year, 13 times that you guys have come back from 10 or more points down. And, like, I can't count the number of other times that you all have been down, but, like, make it a two-possession game or a mm-hmm. one-possession game in the fourth quarter. Is there, like... How do you do that, but, like, on a bigger scale, like the season scale? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, just having that mindset. I feel like it's all a mindset. And uh, just having it, like, approaching every day like that, like mm-hmm. finishing through. And I think that's that's just a mindset for me. That's my mindset. Just try to finish through the finish line and, uh, you know, finish hard. Yeah. Be easy with, like, April coming around the corner to, like, all right, I'm not going to do that last rep in the mm-hmm. weight room. Or I'm, Start like, to not going to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, I'm not going to do that last, like, set of 10 shots or whatever mm-hmm. but not tricky but not trade. but not tricky trade not around <laughs> not here tricky. not no kc not tricky yeah. <laughs> awesome well trey we look forward to seeing you guys back in action in denver and then in portland as well for all of you listening thank you so much for tuning in be sure to like rate and subscribe wherever you get your podcast thank you so much to our producer matt bishop and for trey for joining us here today and until next time thunder up and catch you later